Well, why don't we keep going with this, uh, this stuff with uniaxial bending, okay? So, and just to kind of understand what's going on here, you know, we, we had a look at some of these uh, coupons, they're called, that failed. And the one we noticed in particular was the one on the right, because what's going on is it failed at that 45 degree angle, which requires some explanation, being as you're pulling straight on it. Okay. And so we started there and started investigating this. And we started by doing that by looking at a, um, how that angled force would affect the standard cross-sectional plane. And we used a bit of trigonometry to get the force broken into X and Y components. And then divided by the area of the standard cross-sectional plane to get the stresses. And then we took another step that is kind of the point of this uniaxial stuff was even if you've got a force that pulls straight on the bar, you could find how that force would affect that angled plane there. Okay, so that was kind of the idea of what we did next was we looked at that. So if we have a bar where we've cut, we have, look at a plane at an angle, something like that maybe. I don't think this is going to work out. Is it? <laughs> I better start that all over. That's kind of, it's not working. All right, let's try this again. Something like that. So if we take this force pulling straight and we look at how it affects an angled plane, well, if we want to find the normal and shear stresses, we would take that force and break it up into components that are uh, normal and parallel to the plane. Okay, so we just took that angle, that straight force, and broke it up into angled components, just similar to what we did earlier. You know, we just kind of looked at a little bit different version of that. You can take an angled force and break it up into components to be normal and parallel to a standard plane, or you could take a straight force and break it up into components to be normal and parallel to an angled plane, okay? So we did that, and we called uh, this one P, which is the normal uh, symbol for a normal force, and called that one V, and then we can go ahead and find the stresses that those cause on that angled plane. We have to find the uh, area of the angled plane which is the area of the cross-sectional plane, the standard one, divided by the cosine of that 30-degree angle. Okay, so, so that's kind of where we started. And you could do this process for any plane you are interested in, all right? So if you're, you've got a bar here of some type and you're pulling on it, Like so, you can, you can find the stress on any plane you want. I mean, normally, so far, we've been finding it on the standard cross-section. But you could find it on a plane like that. You could find it on a plane like that. Like so, like so. All of these planes have some stress on them. Okay, And you can find the stress on any plane you want simply by doing this set of calculations as we did yesterday. All right? And so what happens here when all these, you know, infinite number of stresses on an infinite number of planes through that material, through that bar, um, if, if you take that load that you're applying and start increasing it, you know, as you do when you do a tensile test, eventually one of the states of stress on one of those planes is, is going to be too much and it's going to fail. All right. That's what's going to happen. All right. So when we went through and broke these coupons here, the one on the left, the plane that reached its limit first was just the standard vertical cross, or excuse me, horizontal cross-sectional plane. That was the one that, as that force that was applied, that tensile force increased, that was the one that broke first. Okay. However, on this aluminum bar here, it wasn't that. It was a plane at 45 degrees. That's the one that reached its limit first. And that has to do with uh, how the atoms arrange themselves uh, in an aluminum bar like that. There's a plane of weakness at 45 degrees, and between the tensile stress and the shear stress on that plane, it failed. Okay, So the failure was caused by a stress pattern like that. Okay. 
So we could take that trig trigonometric uh, stuff that we work through and standardize it a little bit and just make a standard formula out of it. And what that will allow us to do is to find the normal stress and the shear stress on any plane we want. All right? So what you can do then is start with the standard cross-sectional plane, measure an angle from that. Now we need a convention so that everybody measures the angle in the same way. And you know that's how we're going to derive the equation. So we're going to call positive theta, which is the angle, counterclockwise from the standard cross-sectional plane. So that's the angle that will enter into our formula. And we went through some calculations here involving trigonometry. We used the trig both on the force to get it normal and parallel to the plane, but also on the area of the standard cross-sectional plane so that we would get the area that we wanted of the angled plane. So we actually apply some trig functions to this thing twice. And what we come up with then are two formulas. And they're on your formula sheet. And what these formulas do is they tell us what the stress is on an angled plane for a uni axially loaded bar. Uni means one, axial means axis. So this is a bar that has one load on it, just stretching it or compressing it. And so there are the two formulas. And those are formulas uh, 21 and 22. Okay. So if you start pulling on a bar and you want to know what the stress is on some plane, these formulas will tell you what it is. Okay. Now, if you've got a material that acts pretty much the same in all directions, probably what you're going to want to know, and, and just generally what you might want to know as an engineer, is what the maximum stresses are. So that's the next little thing we'll look at. But, but are we don't doing okay with what we've gone through here so far? Are we good with the concept? Because we're going to work with this a good bit in this class, so we just want to be kind of tracking this and understanding it. Okay. All right, so let's uh, find the maximums. Let's find sigma max in the bar and tau max in the bar and see where they're at. All right, so to do that, what we got for these formulas is P the load, A the standard cross-sectional area of the bar, and theta the angle. Um, P and A are given. There's nothing that's going to change about those um, if we're just looking for the maximum stress. But what we can mess with is the angle. See, we can we can play around with that. So we want it, we want to know when does cosine of that angle theta maximize? Okay, and we're going to find sigma max first here. Okay, and that will maximize. You know, at when cosine theta is one, and that happens when theta is zero. All right. So if we plug zero into there, we get p over a cosine squared of zero. Cosine squared of cosine of zero is one. Cosine of the square of one is one. So sigma max is just p over a, and that occurs when the when the angle is zero from the standard cross-sectional plane. All right. Okay. So what we get there is sigma max is p over a at theta equals zero. So there's the standard plane that has the maximum normal stress on it. It's just a standard cross-sectional plane, and the magnitude of that is just P over A. And see, that's what we've been doing all along anyway, right? If I just say, what's the normal stress in a bar, you just take P over A, and you knew it was applied on the standard cross-section, right? I mean, this isn't anything new. It's just a lot more complicated way to get there, but, but you know, it's just P over A, all right? But, but that's good, because that means our equation is an accurate model, and we've been doing this already, If you know, okay? Now, the other thing I can do is I can take that angle at theta equals zero. That's where the maximum normal stress acts. I can plug it into the shear stress formula, and it would be minus P over 2A times sine of theta, theta being zero. The shear zero is out, okay? So what that means is if you've got a bar and you just start pulling on the thing, The maximum normal stress will be on the standard cross-sectional plane. Its magnitude will just be P over A, the load divided by the standard cross-sectional area. And also on that plane, so tau is zero degrees, it's, it's zero. There's no shear on that plane. It's just a straight pull on it, a straight normal stress. Okay. 
right? Now we can do the same sort of thing to find tau max, all right? So tau is minus p over 2a sine 2 theta. Once again, we're not going to mess with p or a. Those are given. What we look at is theta. So we want to maximize sine of 2 theta. Well, sine maxes out at either 90 or 270 degrees. Now that's 2 theta because that's what's in the formula. So half of that is 45 and 135. So the shear maxes out at 45 degrees okay, or 135. Either one. Okay, if I plug those angles into the shear formula, what I'll find is that tau max is either plus or minus p over 2a. Okay. So the maximum shear in one of those bars is half of what the maximum normal stress is. Okay. So if I take another bar and start pulling on it, or any bar, I guess, and just start pulling on it, what I'm going to have is from, measured from the standard cross-sectional plane at 45 degrees, that's where the maximum shear stress is going to act. Okay. Plus, there'll be a normal stress on that also of P over 2A. Because right? if I take that 45 degree angle and I plug it into the normal stress formula, the normal stress will come out to be P over 2A also. All right? So what's going to happen here, again, if I start pulling on a bar, is I'm going to get the maximum normal stress at P over A on the standard cross-sectional plane, and I'm going to get the maximum shear stress at 45 degrees from that standard cross-sectional plane. Plus, there'll be a normal stress on that also of P over 2A, as, as it turns out. Okay. So that's what those equations will boil down to. We doing all right with that? All right. You know, and I'm not sure what page this is. Is this in there somewhere? I don't know. 292. Okay, thanks. So why don't you uh, fill that out? If I got a bar and I'm pulling on that thing with P, what what is the normal stress and shear stress on those different planes that I've indicated? I don't know if I showed it on there or not, but this angle ought to be 45 degrees. So just kind of for your reference, you know, what what is the normal stress and shear stress, at least on the two that I'm indicating on the bottom. The one on the top, well, we can get to that in a minute. But how about the two I've got labeled? What, what are they? What are those values going to be? We want to, you know, we want to start getting a, a feel for this, okay?
Yeah. What about that standard cross-sectional plane? What's the normal stress on that? This one. What's that? Yeah, it's P over A, right? And see, we've been doing this all term. If I ask you what's the normal stress, that's, that's what you'll tell me. If I ask you what plane would it act on, that's what I think what you would have told me. Yeah? All right. Now, is there any shear on that plane? Yeah, you know, no shear, okay? And see, let's see, shall I say this? I, I remember when I started working, I, sometimes I, I just thought too much about all the equations and stuff. I'm a civil engineer, right? It, I'm, it helps me a lot if I just remember all these projects I work on, they're just glorified home improvement projects. That's all they are, right? Don't, don't get too crazy about the equations, okay? If you pull on something, that's going to be P over A, and there's no shear on that plane. You're just pulling it apart, right? There's nothing going on there, okay? Now, where you pick up the shears is at 45, right? Because, all right, and we'll look at that in just a second. But what's the shear on the 45 degree plane? Yeah, it's 2A, right? It's the shear isn't quite so big, okay? For that, for that plane, and then the, the normal stress on that plane, there also is normal stress, right? It's also P over 2A. You okay with that? And why don't we have a look at that? Let's look at, let's kind of do that, uh, investigate by making a cut through something routine like what we do, okay? See, we're going to pull on that bar like that. Well, what's the bar going to do if we look at forces that are normal and parallel to that plane, okay? To resist that pull and to hold together, you know, that, that piece of the bar would be in equilibrium, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling this piece out right here, this thing, and I'm just looking at it, okay? So what's going on there is the bar will pull back, right, like that, to hold its equilibrium. So if I pull on that bar to the left, that side of the bar, well, the bar is going to pull back to the right. But if I look at a force that's normal to that plane, which is the normal force, it, sure, it pulls to the right, but it also pulls up. So the shear is going to do that, right? This is what will happen to hold that thing in equilibrium. Shear and the load. Okay? And... Okay, so whatever I pull on this thing with, that, that's what's going to go on there, right? Now, I'm looking at loads, not stresses, so that's why I didn't put those areas in there. But, but that's, that's how that bar will react on that plane when you start pulling it to the left, okay? You, you all with me there? You see that okay? okay. All right, and then um, how about on the top? Now, is there any normal stress on this plane? If I pull horizontally, a normal force, remember, that's normal to the plane, would pull up like that. And see, that ain't going to happen because I'm just pulling horizontally. I'm not introducing any sort of vertical pull on this thing. So that's going to zero out, okay? Same thing with the shear. So, so that's what's happening on those three planes that we're looking at. The standard cross-sectional plane has a full normal stress on it, P over A. There's no shear on that plane. 90 degrees off of that, there's, there's no normal stress. Okay, it's zero, and the shear is zero again. So this is sigma max. That's sigma min. And the tau mins, there's two of them. Now, halfway between sigma max, the maximum normal stress, and sigma min, the minimum normal stress, that's where the shear maximizes. That's when you get that greatest sliding action. So that's tau max right there. And then on the tau max plane, you've got the average normal stress. Okay. So we'll apply this idea in, in biaxial loading too when we get to it, but that's kind of the idea, and that, that's kind of a little bit of the I don't know, common sense or just visualization of what we're doing here with all these equations. Right. We're doing all right with that? You got any questions? Okay. Uh, the two, the uh, on the equation or what on the equation? Yeah, for, for tau. Yeah, why is there no um, sign? 
Oh, because that's 45. That's this plane by this, yeah, I'll call it out a 45 degree plane. Uh -huh. Sine of two theta is sine of 90, which is why it, it goes away. Right? How do you get over to the Where do you get two come from? It comes, the two comes from the basic uh, shear formula that I started with. And we, we did that whole trig derivation for the shear that, that by, you know, when we derived it, tau, tau. is sine, you know, P over 2a sine 2 theta. That's where it comes from. Okay? And it's over 2a. Right. Okay. Other, other questions? Okay. All right, so, so there we go. All right, now let's just look at an example here. We're going to do two problems at once. Okay, but anyway, before we back up, so I, I guess I got a few pictures here. On the left, what kind of failure is that? Is that a normal stress failure or a shear failure? Normal. Yeah, normal, right. Okay, because it's straight on, okay? An axial or normal stress. Okay, that's what made that bar fail. You pulled on it right on that plane at zero degrees, stress built up and it broke. How about this one? Is, that, is this one shear or normal? Primarily it's shear. It does have some normal kind of helping it, so to speak, because if I pull like that on that bar and I look at what's happening at 45, what's happening at 45 is I get a shear building up at 45 like that that's going to make that plane slide. I also get some normal stress building up like that that's going to pull those planes apart and help that sliding action occur. So that's kind of a little bit of both, okay? It's commonly called a shear failure though, all right? All right, this is, uh, this is from Turkey, if I remember right. Um, all right, now this one, yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously, uh, when you get an earthquake, you get all sorts of loads coming all different directions. But see that 45-degree plane there? That's, I don't think that's an accident, okay, that that's a coincidence. I think you got some shear going on there when this thing fails right on that plane at 45, okay? This one's kind of tough to tell, but I don't know. You know, this thing, you know, it broke, obviously. Um, and wood grain is tough because you get planes of weakness that show up. This one might have just split right here straight on with, with normal stress. But again, see that 45 plane in there? That might have been some shear failure. I, it's hard to tell. Okay, I couldn't really make a call on that one. Okay. All right. This one isn't too subtle, is it? It's a compressive failure. Just pushed straight down and crushed it. Okay, so I don't see any shear going on there. That just got crushed. Okay. All right. So, so uh, you know, we're running these equations and doing all this stuff. But the other part of this story is when you start applying loads straight on, you still get stresses that build up at all different angles, and failure is a combination of how big those stresses are plus if a material has a plane of weakness at a certain angle. All right. So if I had a board here and I started pulling on it, and if the grain just happened to run at 45 degrees, that thing might fail at 45 with shear because it's got a weak plane lining up at 45. That might be why it fails there. You know, you're going to get the maximum shear at 45, and if you've got that plane of of, of the grain that might be kind of weak and susceptible to that, that might be where it fails. Okay. <clears throat> but when we pull like this, we get stresses that build up simultaneously on all these different planes. And so, again, the failure just occurs as a combination of how high the stress goes plus the material and where it might be weak. Okay. So, so let's have a look. I think this is 240 still. Let's just say we got a bar and we've attached it to the wall and we start pulling on it. And let's do a couple of things here. Now, this is actually two separate problems, and I think it's important to think about this, okay? The first two lines are one problem. Find the maximum stresses. So if you're going to design this thing, what are the maximum stresses? Okay, which are often what you want to know. 
So why don't we just start with that, okay? Oops. So if we're just going to find the maximum stresses on that thing, all we got to do to find sigma max is take the load and divide it by the area, just like we've done before. So we got 240 kilonewtons divided by 0.03 times 0.04 is the area. standard cross-sectional area and that's 0 0.0012 okay. so I'm just taking the dimensions of the bar and using that to get the area and then I just take the load and divide it by that now that's a tensile load so the maximum normal stress will just be P over A 200,000, 200 million newtons per meter squared. So 200, 200 megapascals. That's the maximum stress, and that occurs on the standard cross sectional plane. Okay, now tau max will be plus or minus the load, 240,000, divided by twice the area. So that's plus or minus 100 million newtons per meter squared plus or minus 100 megapascals. The minimum normal stress will just be zero, and the average normal stress is 100 megapascals also. So if I've got a standard material and I just want to see what those maximum stresses in there are that I might want to design for, that, that's how I find them. Just P over A and P over 2A, basically. All right, let's see if we can sketch these up because we always want to have a picture in our mind of what's happening here. Okay. So as we just went over, these max and min stresses act at 0 degrees and 45. That's where they occur on an axially loaded bar. So there's the 0 and 45 degree planes sketched up. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, as, as we've done before, I'm making a cut through the object, let's say at zero degrees. I take either the entire left side or the entire right side, my, and that's so I can show these internal stresses. So I've got that load pulling back to the left, and I'm making one cut there at zero degrees with the cross-sectional plane, and then the others I'm making at 45, because I know that's where the, one of the maximum shears acts and at 135 because that's where the other one acts okay so i'm just doing that so let's see if we get a picture of those stresses and put them on this sketch okay all right so the first one is right on that standard plane and is that i think that's 200 megapascals right that's a normal stress. And as I've said, that's just what we've been doing all term. You know, for the last couple weeks, that's what we've been doing. So that's just pulling straight on. There's no shear on that plane, so I don't bother showing any shear. Because the shear is zero on that plane. Now on the 45 degree planes, I've got the maximum shears. That's where they act. Right. 
Now, you can do this two ways. You can do it visually or you can do it through calculations. I kind of like to look at it and kind of figure it out. See, if I when I look at that plane, I've got two potential shears. One could go that way and the other could go that way. Now, if I want to figure out which one's on that plane, what I do is I look at that load on the left, pulling this thing to the left, and I realize that these internal stresses hold equilibrium. So the shear is going to go to the right to counteract the pull to the left. Okay? And what that's going to be is tau max, and that's going to be P over 2A. Now there's also going to be a normal stress acting there, and that will also go to the right to counteract that pull, and that'll be sigma max, and that is also P over 2A. Okay. And you see, um, when you start, if you start looking at those stresses and multiply them by areas to get forces, the sigma max pulls up a little bit, the tau max pulls down a little bit, those will balance out, see, for equilibrium. Okay. But what those sigma max and tau, oops, I got a, I got a bum number there, sorry, bad, or bad subscript, that shouldn't be sigma max, that's sigma average, I'm sorry, there we go. See, what those stresses are doing is they're counteracting the pull on the other side of the bar. Okay? They're holding the bar in equilibrium. Now, on the other 45-degree plane, okay, keep in mind that you, you reference those planes from the standard cross-sectional cross-section counterclockwise positive. So this is theta equals positive 45 here because that's from the standard cross-sectional plane counterclockwise. Okay. I've got sigma average. And that's 100 megapascals, right? Which is P over 2A. And then tau max is also 100 megapascals. Is that a plus or a minus on that one? You all remember the sign convention on that? Sign convention on shear? It's on the top there. What's that now? This one's actually uh, negative, okay? Because on top of the page, I think I referenced that, if I remember right. And what, what the way I think about this is I'm going to take a board and I'm going to cut it like that. I'm going to nail the board to the wall, and I'm going to apply that shear stress like that. Which way would that board rotate if I do that? Come around like that. Clockwise is negative. It's just like the moment sign convention. So that's why that's, that would be a negative. Okay. So that's negative. Okay. Uh, oh, thanks. Megapascals? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I wrote down the wrong unit there. Okay. So tau max there is negative 100 megapascals is what that is. All right. Now the other one... What's going on here when I look at it is when I pull to the left, the shear will act to the right. And that's 100 megapascals. And what that is, is P over 2A. Okay. And then what I'm going to have is also the normal stress acts this way. And that's also going to be 100 megapascals.
Oh, yeah, thanks. I'm screwing up here a little bit. That's average. Thank you. There we go. All right. So, so that's what's going on there. So this theta here is minus 45 degrees because we're going from the standard cross-sectional plane. We're rotating clockwise. And then the sigma average is 100 megapascals. And then what's the sine on tau max? Plus or minus? It's positive, yeah. It's, you know, if you visualize that, if you have a board that looks like that, you, you take a nail and pound it into the wall and you do this to it, push on it in that fashion, that thing's going to come around counterclockwise, and that's positive. Okay. Right. All right. Um, now let's have a look. So, so that's the maximums. Now let's have a look at these others. This, these, let's just say that we also want to know the stresses that act at 27 degrees. Now that angle there is measured counterclockwise from the standard plane, so that's 27 degrees. And so let's find the stresses there. And who knows why we might want to do that. Maybe that board, even though you don't really cut boards like this, but maybe there's a grain running at 27 degrees. Like, okay, I, gotta, I better check the stress on that, okay? That might be one reason why you do, might want to do this. So all you do then is take the general formulas, formulas 21 and 22, and just plug in 27 degrees into them, okay? So sigma is P over A cosine squared theta. Um, okay, so the... Uh, Normal stress at 27 degrees is 240,000 newtons divided by the area, 0.0012 times cosine 27 quantity squared. That comes out to be 159 megapascals. And then tau is minus P over 2A sine 2 theta, so minus 240,000 newtons over 2 times 0 0.0012 times the sine of twice 27, which is 54. Okay, and that's negative 80.9 megapascals. So we've done two separate things here. We found what the max and min stresses are on that bar. And then we're also looking at what the stresses happen to be at 27 degrees. Okay. So the max and min stresses are just P over A, P over 2A and zero, I guess, for the minimums. And then to find the stresses at a given angle, you just use equations 21 and 2. Okay. Now, if you want to sketch this up, you could draw up that 27 degree plane and come up with a sketch of what that looks like. All right. So there's the 27 degree plane. We've got a normal stress on there of 159 positive and a shear on there of negative 80.9. So why don't you sketch that up? Just take a minute. We've just got a couple minutes left here. And uh, see what you can do with that. What would a normal stress of 159 and a shear stress of negative 80.9 look like on that plane?
Okay. So the normal stress pulls straight out. Normal to the plane, the shear stress is a negative. What that means is if you look about the center of that free body diagram there, that shear would rotate it clockwise. So that's why it's negative. And when you look at it, that seems to make sense because, you know, your, your uh, applied force goes to the left. The stresses then would go upright and down left. Or excuse me, upright and down right. So they pull, both pull to the right to counteract this applied force. And you got your normal stress up, and that would be counteracted by the shear down. And they all balance out. Okay. work on a couple of these um, 181 and 183 these will be due Wednesday we already got a few of them due Monday so 181 and 183 make these due Wednesday now one thing I'll caution you on 181 is watch your angle beta is uh, measured counterclockwise from the cross-sectional plane and the angle I gave you there is not so use the proper angle you have to derive the proper angle on that one okay so just watch on 181 watch out for that all right so we'll call it good then Yeah, yeah, I'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll uh, we'll take care of that.